Welcome back to another episode of the Say It Out Loud podcast. Okay, y'all, I have never brought anyone on here to talk about what we're going to talk about today, uh, and I'm going to get into it, but I invited Alexa Martinez, who is that sex chick everywhere, that sex chick on Instagram, that sex chick on her podcast. Uh, she's the host of the that sex, chick, that sex Chick podcast. Alexa, you have so many fascinating conversations with people about the act of sex itself, the dynamics, the different kinds of sex, and what it takes to have remarkable relationships. And just like you, even though you were raised in the deep south of Louisiana, I was raised in a Hindu Brahmin household, which is basically like the equivalent of Orthodox Jews, okay? I mean, like I, were, I grew up in a very prayerful, uh, religious home where my mom would give me the look of death if I showed even like a slight bit of cleavage. And so, even growing up, you know, anytime we'd watch a movie and people would kiss or they things would start to get heated, my mother would say, I don't even know why she would say this. She would say, shame, shame, puppy shame. And she would say it in this really thick Indian accent. And so I had no clue what the puppy part was about, but I do remember feeling anytime I saw two people being intimate or a woman dressing in what I was trained to believe was provocative, I felt like it was naughty and wrong. And I thought it was wrong of me to be drawn to that because I was drawn to that. And so I brought you on for two reasons. You wrote two Instagram posts, which we're going to get into one on how to attract an emotionally available man. And also you wrote a post on the woman who is too much and what struck a chord with me and triggered me in the best way possible. And I say triggered like in a way, like, thank you for being such a great teacher, because that is what your job is. Your job is to trigger for me. And that felt really good. Like when you, you, you said uh, that there's this woman, you know, like she's too much and she may think she wants an emotionally available man, but I know this, that even if an emotionally available man were to cross my path right now, maybe, maybe not right now. I don't know. I don't know if I would even recognize or feel him because like you said in that post, women who are too much can come off as energetically domineering. When I read those words, energetically domineering, I was, um, it hit me so hard because I'd never thought of myself in that way. But when you read, when you wrote it, I go, Oh shit. Oh my God. I'm energetically domineering. What mm -hmm. I love about you, Alexa, and why I brought you on, and then we're going to open it up to you is I see you as someone who you say it out loud. You are very mm -hmm. firm in your voice, in your power and your strength. And you have a man who worships you. You have a mm -hmm. man who loves you. You have a man who mm -hmm. respects you. And I see the love and I'm like, wait, Okay, let's bring her on. What is she doing? I want to know. So I just want to <laughs> say thank you for taking your time. I know Tuesdays are our, both of our busy days. So thank you for taking the time being mm -hmm. here today. How are you? Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, that's what a lovely intro. <laughs> you know, I don't I guess I don't normally consider myself to be all that triggering yeah. to people. But mm -hmm. then I think about my subject matter and I go, oh, it's not like I am attempting, like I'm trying mm -hmm. to poke at people's wounds. Mm -hmm. It's more like, I'm going to say it as I see it yes. for first and foremost, through my own lens and through my own eyes. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to say it, how I am experiencing it through our community and what mm -hmm. I'm absorbing from people who are in our greater audience. And mm -hmm. then, um, you know, through friends, through family, and then I'll just say the story. And if it resonates with people, then awesome. And if it, if it pushes some buttons and hopefully, um, hopefully if I've done my job right, then it's in a way that causes them to be very introspective mm -hmm. versus self-critical versus self-blaming. Um, and my, my hope is that, um, even in the midst of maybe experiencing some of those things, they also feel empowered because mm -hmm. if I can have the ins the perspective shifts, you know, mm -hmm. um, then anyone can, and if I can have the relationship that. I have, which is by far from perfect. However, um, we do what is required in order for us to have, we have the makings of a long withstanding relationship. Um, and so that wasn't modeled for me when I was growing up. No one around me modeled that for me growing up. And so, yeah, that's, that's definitely my hope underlying hope. It's not, you know, to in intentionally mess with people's days, but <laughs> no, I, I want to say, and I, I say this to everyone in my audience, I say this in my book, say it out loud. Your triggers are your teachers and triggers don't have to be painful when you, sure. it doesn't have to throw you out. It doesn't have to knock you down. When I read 
your post on the woman who perceives herself or has been called or has been told she's too much. I want to actually read this straight from your post. Um, Mm -hmm. Man, you said, you asked, are you a too much woman or do you lack taking personal responsibility? And then you go on to say, while I believe this generally speaking, Something that I have noticed is that some women use their too muchness as an excuse to be overly critical, disrespectful, and energetically domineering. First person that I thought of was not me, it was my mother. Because my mother in the name of mothering and in the name of loving us, I mean, she she is the harshest woman I know. And she will openly say that. I mean, she comes from a tough life, immigrant background. And I took that on as a way to protect. And I can see how being that way has um blinded me maybe or just completely cut off from finding an emotionally available man i know a lot of the women in my say it out loud group this is one of the things that we're currently talking about Mm -hmm. you said something that i'd love for you to go deeper into you said let me let me pull this up because i wrote this down you said here (laughs) do you want an emotionally available man and then when you when you when you slid over you said respect him and accept him and so Mm -hmm. i'm just going to ask the question that is Maybe other people are thinking, but it's on my mind and I have you here. So I'm going to pick the hell out of your brain because I really respect yeah. you so much. Yeah. How, how do I begin to respect and accept a man when it just feels like there's so much he has to fix? Did you hear that question? Uh-huh. I did sure did. That? Yeah. Yeah, I know. And then you like wanted to hide from the question that you had. well what it I mean what are the things that you imagine that he's got to fix like he's not living up to his potential Mm -hmm. that you have determined is what his potential is yes that's that is that is the thing that I I have found there's like this need to fix there's just this need oh I because I can see the gaps we can see I can see the gaps and I'm like if you just did this things would be okay now I I work with my therapist on this I know that this is living in a fantasy of some unhealed (laughs) thing and so I'm working through it, but that's why I loved your post. And I want to hear from you. What did it take yeah. from you to learn to respect and accept a man as he is? Yeah. Yeah. And so as a feminine creature, regardless of if you consider yourself to be alpha in nature mm-hmm. or have a bit more of a masculine edge, or you grew up with a family that taught you that this is the way that you needed to be, um, that you should be for whatever the reasons, um, you know, you're still a feminine creature through and through if you are a woman and, and our feminine essence, of course, you have both masculine and feminine, feminine energies that you can, um, play around with and leverage at various times. But in our core, our, our rest state is to be feminine in nature. Um, and so the, the easeful, the rest, the surrender, but also chaos and destruction, like, mm-hmm. like, like mother nature, mm-hmm. you know? And so like it's, it's shifted, um, into spring in Austin. And so the blue bonnets are out and it's so stunning. All the wildflowers are everywhere. Mm -hmm. And and to look at that and go, wow, mother nature is so beautifully creative right Mm -hmm. after a season of winter where everything died and -hmm. everything fell away. And it was, and it was hard. And then, um, you know, I'm from South Louisiana. And so what is also mother nature is how many times I've run away from a hurricane and then come home and shit's not the same. And then we've had to rebuild. And, and so mother nature, feminine essence is creative and destructive. It is, um, it is so much more than I think a lot of women understand and give themselves space to express and experience. So many women are operating under this idea and this illusion that they have to be everything, hold everything, do everything. And I personally am an entrepreneur and I have Mm -hmm. multiple employees and I run a business and my husband works for me. I mean, if you want to look at it broken down, Mm -hmm. I own the company and he is a W2 employee under me. And Mm -hmm. so he actually has more benefits from our company than I do because I'm the owner. And when we go to buy a house, you know, after, well, we're, we're trialing out dripping Springs right now, which is like way out in the country. Mm -hmm. Um, so we're renting now, which is, you know, feels perfectly, uh, like we can change our mind any moment, which feels really mm-hmm. good. And also we want some roots because we want to start our family. But when we go to buy a house, it's, it looks better for him because he's not the one that owns the business, you know, like it's mm-hmm. so, you know, how, how do I reconcile the things that I was told with my actual feminine nature? I grew up with a single military mom. She was married five times or she's been married five times. 
And I also grew up in South Louisiana, going to Catholic school. So I had conflicting information constantly in front of me that what I was seeing in my personal life was not the right way to do it. And it wasn't good and it wasn't true. And it, that was wrong. <clears throat> it was sinful. And so I also grew up seeing that a mom has to, a woman has to take care of her family. She literally has to do it all. She has to cook and she has to clean and she's got to pick up. So she's got to go to work for X amount of hours just to be able to afford whatever our basic needs are and to afford daycare because she's the sole provider and the sole caregiver. You know, I, thankfully I had my grandparents, so I was raised by an older couple and I spent mm. a ton of time alone, meaning I have turned into a young woman that can take care of herself. I mm -hmm. absolutely can take care of myself and I know how to make money and I know how to move through the world and I know how to command a stage and command an audience and I know how to get what I want. Mm -hmm. And then there's the whole the slew of things that I want deep down that oftentimes I'm not, I haven't really understood how I could get them. I also want love and devotion. I also want to be cared for, not from a place of I can't do for myself, but because someone loves me so much and considers me so much that they are devoted to me, that they adore me, that they cherish me, that they want to show up for me. And I didn't know what any of that looked or felt like. Um, and so I think we have a couple of generations, a few generations now operating with this idea that a woman can do anything. You can be anything that you want to be. And the pressure, the fucking pressure of be the mom and have the business and be the wife and all the things. And they're touched out and they, you know, and, and they're stressed out and they're not able to be inside of their bodies. They can't slow down, meaning that they can't really have access to their feminine nature. And so when we get to, and that's like the, the, the preemptive underlying thing that I want to address and just bring mm -hmm. forward. And that isn't every woman's reality today, but I'm 34 and that's mine with my circumstances. Mm -hmm. And so this idea that I'm going to respect and accept my husband in order for me to have an emotionally available man and to have the relationship that I desire and so that I can actually chill the fuck out and have my life be what I want it to be. It was a really tall order. Like, how do I do this? I never mm -hmm. saw it modeled. What is the way that I get this and I achieve this? Because I, I knew in theory that it was out there, but did I have to be this rollover, passive, walked all over, doesn't have a say, doesn't have an opinion, you know, kind of discredit my intellect and my knowledge mm -hmm. and, and all of that in order for me to have this thing, that doesn't seem like the life that I want to mm -hmm. have. So like, where do I, where do I actually fit in this? And, um, and so kind of bringing it back to, you know, the original question of how do you go about respect, respecting and accepting this, this, the feminine, um, I don't know if you've ever heard it described this way, where it's like, when she's feeling emotional, don't try to fix it. Yes. Right. And so mm -hmm. you've said, you've said like, there's so much that they need to fix. Well, how much do you like when someone sees you in your emotions, which is not rational, which is not reasonable a lot of times, and it isn't fixable. It's unexplainable. It's the it's one thing that can set me off. If I'm in an emotion and someone tries to intellectualize it, analyze it, rationalize it. I'm like, just let me be in my emotion. I have, right. I can move through it. I don't right. need you to do. Yeah. So right. keep going. No, it's the truth. It's yeah. the truth. That's, and that's what yeah. you desire when you are in that space of a, um, feeling, which is very feminine. You know, mm -hmm. what you need is a, a structure of sorts, someone to hold you, maybe mm -hmm. not actually physically hold your body while you're processing, but hold the space enough, allow for you to be, meaning that they're being very present with you. They're actively listening to you and they're not off in space in their mind. They're not huffing and puffing or rolling their eyes or here we go againing. And they're not mm -hmm. sitting here. You feel like you're sharing with them and they're, it's like their mind is off in space while they're processing how to fix what you're talking about. You want them to actually be present with you. And mm -hmm. if you want that from your man, then you have to do that back to him. You have to, you have to be the I'll, I'll give you some examples and, and, mm -hmm. and description as I go here, but you essentially have to be his partner as well. And the feminine creature that you are back in his direction. And you're going to flip flop, you know, because men today are expressing and going more into their emotions when the environment is safe. It is mm -hmm. not safe when their woman is being hypercritical and is being disrespectful and being domineering and trying to, um, in, in the spirit of she has an opinion too, and is bold as well 
diminishing all of the mm. decisions that he could be making. He's literally the, the, he's so excited to be your partner, to be your hero and to be your protector. And all you're doing is showing him all of your weapons. You've got it. You've got everything. So what is he good for? He doesn't have his role. He's not sure. And that can feel like a lack of purpose. That can feel dispassionate. That can feel like they're looking to porn and looking to um, alcohol or looking mm -hmm. to, you know, sports or whatever the thing is in order to feel some kind of aliveness and autonomy. Because anything that they've decided to do, especially when it comes to you, or especially when it comes to the family, they're being ref what's being reflected to them is that they're not good enough, that they're not doing enough, that they're not showing up enough, that they haven't grown enough, that they're not on the path enough, that they will never be this thing. And then the woman sits there and goes, I deserve better. And I call bullshit because you have created what you are. You have created your reality. So when your husband or your partner is doing something and they are making decisions, let them be the individual that they are. Just like you want to have your individual expression, they also need to have their individual ways of coming to conclusions and logicking and fixing things around the house. And you know what? They might use this paint that isn't the exact color that you wanted and, you know, or they might go fix in air quotes, a thing that you really would like for them to fix. And it's like not quite right. And sometimes that's going to happen because we're human. So you have to give space enough for your partner to fuck up, to be a human, because you want that same gift back that get, because really you're in it together. And if you're on the same team, then collaborate with one another versus competing with, mm -hmm. I want to be right. And so when my husband, his name is Jordan, um, this was, has been a really big shift, you know, this respect and accept thing, especially after going through grief and loss. So we experienced, um, I, we experienced a miscarriage at the end of 2022 and it sent me into, um, at right at first, I didn't think that it was going to be grief. And I didn't think that I was going to feel it the way other people were telling me that I might feel it. I felt like, oh, I'm okay. This happens. We'll just get right back on the horse. No big deal. Um, and about a month went by and I needed medical intervention, um, to actually complete the miscarriage. And, um, he didn't know what to do. He didn't know how to support me. He didn't know how to love me. And the thing was that he was doing the best that he had with the resources that he had. And he grew up parents split young, um, or parents split when he was really young, mom married four times, dad married three times, living in two different States, having to travel back and forth wow. each year. His attachment figure is his brother. And he only knows humor as a means for protection and to keep himself safe because his mom is also functioning alcoholic and, and still is. And so in order for him to be fed and to be taken care of, he had to rely on other people and other families to take him in to make sure that he was taken care of in the neighborhood in Ohio. And so here I am going through a complex set of emotions and I have my husband here that's like, I don't know what to do. And the, as best as I could do is say, lean on your friends, go find friends, go find community that have been with a wife or a person that has gone through this. And that was the best that I could do <clears throat> instead of accepting him for, you know, the way that he was showing up because he was showing up. I took that as um, an interesting opportunity to push him even further away so that I could self-isolate so that I could in some ways go so deep into my sadness that pretty much no one could help me, um, except for myself. And then I started ruminating and creating stories about how this, um, I didn't know how I was going to get out of it. My friendships were going to be affected, uh, life as I knew it was going to change. I no longer really associated with the maiden archetype because I'd crossed over into a positive pregnancy test, meaning that in one alternative reality, I had a baby, you know, nine months later, mm -hmm. And now, but I'm also not pregnant and not a mother. And so I'm in this weird liminal space of transition where I don't mm -hmm. know who the fuck I am. Mm -hmm. And I have this partner who's wanting to do for me, doesn't know what to do and is trying to do. And I told him it was all wrong. And, and so, and I, and I bring this, you know, this up and then I'll kind of round out my story here, but I bring this up because it was through that experience where I really needed I really needed him and I really needed my community and all that. And I was spiraling. Um, and it was hard, you know, one of the hardest things that I've ever gone through in my life. And I didn't see that coming. I thought I'm strong. I can get through this. 
this is this is the the path that God has given me and I'm going to learn. I'm going to leverage it to my advantage in the future. I'm going to speak about it. It's it's all good. And then it was not good. Um and so I had to slow down and in the depths of of essentially despair um in this really private place that I was in trying to open up more to to my husband's love um and make it safe for him to love me and support me in all those things. I realized just how disrespectful I was being. And I realized just how much I wasn't accepting him for who he is. And at the same time, also not necessarily accepting all of who I am in this place of transition and not really knowing, like, how do I accept myself when I don't know who I am right now? And it was hard. And um, and so I'll share two resources that really helped. It's, um, and I've been, well, two resources in this particular time. Um, Alison Armstrong's work, which I absolutely adore, um, her work in keys to the kingdom. And I think she's got one that's really popular called the code. Um, Queen's and I code. love her work. Queen's code, Queen's code, Queen's code. code that's what yeah. I meant. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, basically like how to love men and all of that. I, I think she's so mm-hmm. sweet and her work mm-hmm. is amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, and then there's another, another book that, that crossed my path that I listened to during this time. Um, and it's called the empowered wife. Now, The Empowered Wife is not my favorite language um, in that book, though the underlying principles are, you can't argue with them. Mm -hmm. If you choose to respect and accept your partner for who they are, that they are an autonomous, sovereign being that is making decisions, they are equipped, they can dress themselves, they can fix things, they can organize, like they can do it. So let them do it. Um was really pretty fascinating, you know, and, and enlightening in some ways. Mm-hmm. And then also, um, the elements of, of leaning on community and, and what does it actually mean to, to self-care and self-love? Cause a lot of people beat themselves up and thinking I'm not on my self-care game. I need to go get my ass to the gym. There's mm-hmm. n- for most people, there's nothing pleasurable about that experience. And so mm-hmm. self-care and self-love doesn't mean it's the things that you should, that you know, that you should do. It's the mm-hmm. things that feel good. Mm-hmm. And so it's, it's kind of like a whole, you know, it's like, if you want to transform your relationship, the acceptance and the respect for sure, but it's, you got to take care of yourself and learn to do those things for yourself. So I'll pause there. Cause I, I went on like a whole little monologue for a little while. <laughs> I love them. No, I, I was, I had my eyes closed during some time. I was listening to the sound of your voice. And I, I honestly do think if what you were saying just about the respecting and the accepting and how disrespectful you have been to Jordan during that time, because you felt, you know, obviously you were going through a lot of pain and maybe he was not able to support you in the way that you needed. I heard that. I don't think I'd be able to hear that from anybody else because of it's your delivery. I'm, I'm very much a delivery person. And I, mm-hmm. I look at like, I, I appreciate your tone so much as a voiceover mm-hmm. artist, because it's bold, it's energetic. It's there's yeah. a seriousness to your voice. Like that, I, that's how I listen to people's voice. It's like, how would we brand this voice if she was a voiceover <laughs> artist? But besides the playful part of this, I wanted to, um, first of all, say um, thank you for sharing that about your miscarriage. I know that, mm-hmm. that I know you're, oh, you openly share so as to help other people and to let people know that they're not alone. So thank you for sharing that. Thank you for also sharing um, about Jordan and how he uses humor to deal. I have dated many men like that and I never mm-hmm. knew quite what to do with that. You know, it's like, is, is yeah. everything a joke? And obviously having been in therapist and having been in therapy since I was a child and also being a therapist. Yes. I logically know that, but when mm-hmm. I'm in it, when I'm in it, everything goes, all logic goes out the window. It's just trauma response after trauma response. You started off the monologue by talking about reconciliation. <laughs> no, I love it. No, I, I really want people to come on here and just to share their wisdom. You know, um, you, you, you talked about reconciliation of our feminine nature, our, our, of our feminine essence. I want to say thank you for that because I realized, you know, having, I live alone, you know, I, I was married when I was 28 and, you know, I've been on and off a few relationships, but I'm single now. And I, and I love being alone. I do. And I desire partnership. And when I'm at home by myself, I notice. I'm so in my family. I'm like, I'm, just, I'm such a softy. Like, I'm just like in my flow. Like, it's just, it's beautiful. And what happens is when I get around male energy, masculine energy, I immediately, it's almost like I become one of the dudes. Let me compete. 
Let me tell you how much money I made this month. Let me tell you what I'm working on. And it always just feels like going toe to toe with the guy. And I'm just, yeah. I'm not in it anymore. Mm -hmm. I just, I, yeah, I've outgrown it. So I'm, I'm learning a new way of being. And so one of the questions that I wanted to ask you is what part or parts of you or what beliefs did you have to reconcile for you to be who you are today? Because I really mm. appreciate how much you respect. God, it, it sounds awful even saying this. Like, I really mm. appreciate how much you respect your partner. It's like, no shit. That's what we should be doing. I don't want to say should, but it, I know. It, does, it does go both ways. So yeah, what parts of you did you have to reconcile to, to be who you are today? Um. I mean, I outlined probably a, a decent amount of them just talking about my upbringing and, and mm -hmm. all of that. And, you know, from my first relationship out of high school with uh, my next door neighbor, mm -hmm. you know, and that was my, that was my boyfriend from mm -hmm. senior year of high school all the way to senior year of college. And mm -hmm. if I just look back on what I did in that relationship, um, I gave him the ultimatum that I was going to leave South Louisiana and go to Mississippi. Whoa, oh, you know, like it's super Southern um, over here. So I, I basically was like, I'm going to go to University of Southern Mississippi and you can come with me or not. And he mm. decided to come with me. And then I essentially led the entire, like our relationship. If I look at it, it was just a series of me attempting to control all kinds of things that mm. are ultimately uncontrollable. Um, and especially being him being a different human, a different person, but I gave him the application to also get into school and helped him with that and made sure he got mm -hmm. a job and made sure I chose the apartment. I did everything, mm -hmm. but I did it based off of what I thought I was supposed to do. And then I, and then I started thinking like, if I didn't do this, who would do this? Mm -hmm. Who's going to do this? But I never gave him space to really step up and let him have a part of what was unfolding. It was never even a consideration. And I don't know if he ever, and I, and somewhere in there, I, in my mind, I was like, well, he's not even thinking about it. That's not true. How do I know that that's not true? And so I'm just, I look at then and then how that, that relationship wound up ending, you know, and I, and I look at the place that I was in, I basically understood myself and my identity through that relationship as a young woman, 20, 21 years old. And, and I just was destined to repeat that over and over again, this over controlling, um, kind of experience. And then I would also see it manifest that when I felt like I couldn't control my partner, because then afterwards I wound up getting into a relationship and traveling the world for almost six years, um, living on cruise ships, which is a whole other story, but I was, um, engaged in a relationship and then engaged to someone who from a different country, South Africa, totally different values and upbringing and all of this, these things. And, um, and he was a recovering addict. He was a recovering addict at the time that we first got together and then was back into the throes of addiction, but was hiding it towards the end of our relationship. And so I was in that relationship from 22 to 28, 22 to 26. Mm -hmm. And when I felt like I couldn't control him, I would have OCD tendencies and I would just obsessively organize and clean and outline and dictate like what was happening in my environment so that I could feel like I had some semblance of control and I couldn't surrender. I couldn't be the feminine creature. And, and to say to someone like, I'm okay with these things. If you're doing this, just tell me that line, that whole way of thinking is also bullshit mm -hmm. because it's not a, I would be okay with it. If you just told me, no, it's if you were safe enough to them, they would tell you, meaning if you were surrendered, if you could breathe, if you could regulate, if you could take personal responsibility for the state and the language and the way that you are being, then you would possibly be in an environment that your partner can trust is safe enough for them to bring those parts of themselves. Not just because you say it, and I'll underscore mm -hmm. this here. There's a term called congruence when mm -hmm. you're face to face with someone. Right. And, mm -hmm. um, and I know, you know, this in, in the therapy mm -hmm. world where you say, let's say you're face to face with your partner mm -hmm. and they're saying all the right things, mm -hmm. but their body language doesn't match or their energy is off or the facial features that they're making. They all, these things don't line up. Mm -hmm. And so your body registers them as a threat because they're mm -hmm. not being truthful. And so you could be sitting there saying, I'm a safe place. God damn it. And it's like, no, you're not. No, you're actually not. <laughs> 
Um, and so it's, it's just really interesting dynamic, right? That so many people wind up having, having this play out. So, um, this congruence piece, you want to match your actual feeling. And so that's doing what is required in order to be in congruence. And so that's learning techniques that can downregulate your nervous system that can help you soften and can help you slow down. Mm -hmm. Um, and I don't remember the original, original question that you asked me, Vasavi. <laughs> it was which parts of yourself did you have to reconcile? Yeah, and and all I don't want to make I don't want to make you repeat yourself because you did no, you, all of that. All of it. I I think all the, of that. All yeah. The, they, bye. End of episode. No, all, me, all of like, those things. So <laughs> I um I grew up with a mom who I, I saw her yelling at my father. She would tear him a new one. She would talk about his family. She would say shit about his mother. Like I saw that and I, and I heard it over and over. And my dad would never stand up for himself. So I stood up for my father. I was, I was the strong man that he needed, you know, that I felt like he wasn't standing up for himself. He just let my mother talk to him. And he still does to this day, except the poor man can't talk now because he has a neurological condition. And I realized how much of like the man I've played in growing. Someone had to be the protector. Someone had to be the protector of this bullshit that was happening. And my sister also took on that role in her own way, you know, and yeah. we've both been working with each other. And it's beautiful to have a sibling that you that understands mm -hmm. what you've been through. Um, one of the things that I wanted to ask you is, do you find that when women come to work with you, do you find that the stronger and more domineering a woman is, the harder it is for them to find an emotionally available man? Like how much of it, is it them or is it their picker, their radar, or is it both? I think that you, I think that a person can, um, in a sense, stop trying to find the person and mm -hmm. instead, and this all sounds really kind of woo I out there it. in some ways, but yeah. it's, uh, if you can, like we're saying reconcile. And so like to really, you know, answer, like finish answering the, the, the previous question, it's, um, to let those things go and dismantle, like really get, grow the self-awareness, do the personal develop, read the books, go to the workshops, get a therapist, get a coach, mm -hmm. go to the conference, get better friends, really like double down on how you take care of yourself, all these things. Um, that that's been the reconciliation process for me. Mm -hmm. And then also realizing, um, and breaking down at, at times in my relationship, mm -hmm where I am acting in a way that I know, I know where this leads, but my level of self-awareness shows me that I am acting out a pattern. So I at least have the self-awareness, which is a huge first step. Mm -hmm. I can see that I'm acting out a pattern, but I can't necessarily stop myself, <laughs> but my brain and my body and my words are all like a kerfuffle of like bullshit. And my partner is like trying to figure out what is actually happening with me. And I'm like, I'm like an overheating computer. Yeah. You know, you're funny too. You know that you're very, <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, should I be laughing? Is this inappropriate? But I cannot No, stop. laugh. Yeah. They've got like 72 tabs open and like my computer's running so slow. I can't even like go to shut them out, shut them down, you know? So oh. it's, it's like that's the process. That's the reconciliation. It's that it's the gap from like, I'm blind and I don't know what I'm doing. Like, I just know life's not great. And then I see how other people have it great. And I want to be there. There's mm -hmm. so many steps in between there that so many people are like, how do I go here to there? And they don't mm -hmm. acknowledge that there's steps in between. That's that reconciliation process. That's the integration process. And like, yeah, you can go to some big self-development conference and like have a kapow, wow breakthrough. Mm -hmm. But if you don't have your nervous system um, catch up in a sense and like slow down and really integrate, which is a very feminine kind of thing to think, right? You're integrating it, you're being with it, mm -hmm. you're allowing it. It's gonna bring up dark things and light things and in between things. Um, so that you didn't just have like a kapow breakthrough and then you just go back into your normal life You mm -hmm. actually integrate it. And then what the integration process looks like, you don't just get to where you want to be. It's one step in that direction, one more step in that direction. And it might feel like you take three and a half steps back, but you're not because you mm -hmm. already have the, 
you, you can't go back from the awareness piece, mm -hmm. you know? So in a lot of ways. So anyway, um, that's like really to, to put a bow on the, the, what that process looks like in it. And for a lot of people it's messy and it's mm -hmm. so worth it because what is life alternatively is like in the dark, just let mm -hmm. life happening to you. And it's like, once you understand, like it's happening for you and you have choice in it all and agency in it all, it's like, oh, fuck, now I have this responsibility to do something with it, you know? Um, I'm and so <clears throat> Was there something else say, I was, I was going to say, my mother always said the greater the aw awareness, the greater the responsibility that you have, mm -hmm. because you do know you do yeah. like, so I appreciate you saying that. And I also, you know, this is a very sensitive topic to talk about for me personally, because it's, it's, you know, it's the one area where I feel like, man, I fucked up you know, or I failed, you know, I, I that's not the yeah. narrative. That's one part of me, I know. you know, the part of me that wants to make me feel shitty, you know, cause I got married. We had a big fat Indian wedding, did the whole thing, got, you know, and so I had a guy friend the other day, he gave me some feedback. I really, I welcomed it. And I really, I was grateful for it. He goes, Voss, I've seen you talk to men. He goes, <laughs> he goes, I've seen you talk to men. He goes, I need you to not lead with your accomplishments. I need you to let a man ask you questions. And can you just shut the fuck up a little bit? You know, can you, and I didn't at first, you know, there was just that tiny part of me that was like, oh, I did something wrong. It wasn't mm -hmm. like a, oh, don't silence me. I talk plenty much. Okay. It was more of a, did I do something wrong? I did mm -hmm. something bad the other day, I, you know, I was networking, blah, blah, blah. I was out and I practiced Alexa. I practiced. I was with Great. a man who I found very attractive and I looked very good. And I did it. Like, it was just, it felt so good. Yeah. To, to be, to be looked at and to be, you know, to have a man say, you know, you look radiant, you look mm -hmm. radiant. And I was like, Whoa. And I just stayed there and I didn't know what to say except thank you. And then he Great. continued to talk to me. So mm -hmm. one of the things, and I, I want to say, thank you again, your posts and just who you are and um, your content is just a constant reminder for me that the part of me that I need to reconcile is that I am not weak in giving respect to a man. It sounds weird and um, I'm clumsy. I'm even no, clumsy in saying it because it's like, but the, so the next question that I, I wanted to ask you, I would love to know your worldview and your perspective is that why is it acceptable or why do you think it has become acceptable for women to talk like shit to their men? Hmm. This it's is sad. just a this is a yeah. question that I never, because I never witnessed my dad ever talking down to ever. I mean, he worshiped her. He worshiped. He always said, it's okay. Your mom's just having a bad day. I wish he would have said something. I do. Why yeah, do you think yeah. th that it's acceptable? Like, he, I know it's not acceptable, but it's like, it's almost okay. It's okay for a woman to talk like that to a man, but it would never be acceptable for a man to do that to a woman. Like, why do you think that is? You know, I don't really have a full well thought out answer to that though. I mean, hearing the way that you describe how you wanted to stand up for your dad, it's as, as though he didn't really get to be who he was in any direction because there is the, there was the, the way that you say that your mother spoke to him and created, you know, a type of view of him and for him. And then the ways that you and your sibling thought that he should be, or that he mm -hmm. should respond. And so then he has, and your sibling is your sister, right? Older sister. Yeah. So you have three women who are telling you, it's like, I'm just going to sit over here and be quiet. It's easier. You guys figure it out. That you was know? literally the vibe growing up. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, well, I'm not doing, I'm not good enough for you and I'm clearly not good enough for you too. So like y'all just do what you think you need to do so that we can get to dinner, you know, or whatever the thing wow. is. And so, um, and in some ways you, you like, it's righteous in a sense, you know, where mm -hmm. it feels dignified or it's like, no, I want to stand up for you because I love you. But at, at the same time, it's, you then created a dynamic within yourself where it's like, I won't let anyone speak to me like that. I'm never going to be in that position. I'm going to show the world that this I'm tough and I'm not going to ever, and I'm going to choose a man that's going to be bigger than me. That's going to be able to handle all of who I am and all of that. And I think, mm -hmm. and I hear that sometimes, you know, for, for, for women where they're like, I just need a man to be X, Y, Z, and then they'll be able to mm -hmm. handle all of who I am. Handle. And that's another mm -hmm. thing where I'm just like, what, what world do you live in? You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. you don't, first off, 
does that actually feel good to you? No. Because if it doesn't feel good, mm -mm. then why are you doing it? And then if there's like, I don't know, great. Let's choose some other things that probably will feel better in your body. And if you're not sure, I use probably. Let's experiment. Let's let's yeah. do a deep breathing. Let's pause with patience. Let's allow. Let's allow things to come to us. But, you know, and that's like when you when you ask the question of like, it's the is it the picker or is it the men that's out there or what is it? It's like it's your in, internal environment. You're mm -hmm. magnet. You know, you're a magnet. Mm -hmm. And so when you treat yourself as such, like, what do you want to magnetize to you? Do you want, what kind of relationship do you want? Do you want them to be strong? Do you want them to have a, a, a really solid sense of self? You know, and yes. a lot of times it's like, people will say, oh yeah, well, when we first got together, he was so hot and he was so this and so strong and all these things. And then she fucking started knocking him down over and over and over again to the point where he doesn't understand anymore who he is and what he's meant to do. Roles are all confused. And then we have this over-masculinized woman and then literally his testosterone starts lower, starts to lower. Sex drive is not present. And like, it's just, it's a whole recipe for disaster um, and a relationship that is unfulfilled. And here's the thing, you can, you can fix all this. If you're listening and you're in a relationship, you can fix all of this. If, if any of these patterns are playing out, this is all fixable. Like mm -hmm. almost immediately you can start making shifts and changes. And I also, you know, understand that, that, that I understand the feelings of like, I could have done this so much differently in my previous relationship. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that, that it, it ended because it, it mm -hmm. relationships end. They do. Mm -hmm. And people move on and they grow and all those things. Um, and that's like another little underscore of sorts, like a separate conversation with when, when women say, oh, but I'm on this personal development path and my man's not growing. What do I do? You know, like I'm so open and I'm so these things and he's just, you know, lazy on the couch and doesn't want to grow and doesn't want to meet me in my development. And I hear, I hear that a lot, or he doesn't want to grow and he doesn't want to develop. Um, and I don't find him attractive anymore. And so all of those things are fixable, all of them. And they're fixable in a heterosexual relationship. They're fixable from the woman. You can change the dynamic, change all of it. I believe that. I really believe that you can have everything that you want and it starts from shifting your internal state. You will watch your man light up at the opportunity to be, to have a purpose in your life beyond just whatever his job is, beyond whatever child rearing services you, you seem to, you know, need him for. Like he will show up and, and, and I want to go, and your pussy is magic. You can yes. have every damn thing that you want. You, you can, and it's through the, the love and res uh, respect and acceptance for sure. But, you know, really back to your like worldview. I don't, I think maybe in some ways, um, this culture of it, it's the rebound of like mm -hmm. the 1950s where mm -hmm. the traditional gender roles happened, where she didn't work. Um, mm -hmm. or she, when I say didn't work, that's such an offense to a yeah. stay at home mom. Mm -hmm. Like that's so, whoa. Like I'd rather sometimes go do the job thing where it's like a leads to B leads to C over here mm -hmm. than like a, like a wild dynamic child rearing yeah. situation. So, um, so she didn't have, she had her place in the home and he had his place in like corporate business, whatever. Mm -hmm. And these traditional gender roles were like, he, everybody knew the roles that they had to follow. And then the world developed the next generation. It was like, whoa, whoa hang on. She also has a voice and she needs to vote and she needs this and that. And there's, she needs a seat at the table. And all of this is true. And, and this like really interesting dynamic of, of we need equality. We're not equal. Yeah. We're not, we're actually not <clears throat> equal. The woman for the most part, especially the mother it's not equal. <laughs> like, <No. laughs> you know, if you want to go for this, like interesting, like equality conversation, which I'm not, you know, this isn't a convo to like break apart. Part two. And, um, you part know? Two. Yes. Part two. Sure. Sure. Um, but now we've got like, okay, so now, now we're encouraging you. Know, so divorce is easier and these dynamics are unacceptable in some ways. And now, um, there's aid for single mothers. There's like all these things that support the woman to go and try and do it all on her own. And that's, mm -hmm. you know, not to say like, there's a lot of women that are in relationships where 
the best, the best thing for them and their mental health and their well being is to not be in that relationship anymore, even if they had children there. But like mm-hmm. they are at an incredible disadvantage whenever they leave a relationship. Mm-hmm. Incredible disadvantage in the world being a single mom. Um, and so I think the the rebound then is the Me Too movement. Let's fast mm-hmm. forward to like recently in this most recent decade um and generation where it's, you know, all these things that we realize, oh, women have been being quiet about. And now men are afraid. Um, and you know, then the rebuttal is like, oh, they're afraid. What are they afraid of? Women have been taken advantage of and raped and blah. And I'm not just counting any of that, mm-hmm. but I now see an overly feminized generation of men yes. because they're afraid. And then then we want to shout at them. Now we don't want to fuck you. So this is this is what I see, the things that are playing out. Um, and it's all fixable right now. Now look how much more of an advantage we all have with this awareness of like, we can see the components that have led to this environment. Now, what do we choose? What do we choose on top of that? Like, what's the way that we want to have our life and our relationship go down? Um, so that's, that's all I got so far on that one. <laughs> you are, you are, listen, you, you spoke, my, my favorite word is fixable. If it can be fixed, let's do it. And if I can be the person to fix it, meaning on the inside, that's the only, I mean, the, my, my recovery taught me one thing is that I have no power over anyone but myself. Like that is it. I have, there's like, this is all I have my bubble. We'd be in 12 step programs and be like, this is our bubble. This is all I have control over. And I appreciate so much of what you're saying and the way that you say it, and it gives me relief and it actually softens that heart, you know, because what I, I'm going to say this again, I'm why I asked you to come on here is because I can feel both your strength, which I always, always gravitate towards women who I'm like, yes, they can handle it. They're, they're strong. They're solid on the inside. But on the flip, I also see that there is such a kindness to you, which is Mm -hmm. a kindness and an acceptance of this man that you're with, who mm-hmm. obviously is, I mean, I'm, I'm assuming you guys are happy. I mean, what I, from what I see, and you yeah. seem, you seem good. And, you know, so it's like, obviously like you're doing something right. Mm-hmm. You're being the person, the safe space, not just for this, this, your partner, but also internally. So I, I want to ask you maybe, maybe two more questions. Okay. Sure. Alexa, sure. Um, what do you want to say out loud to the woman who is Craving an, emo- craving an emotionally available man, but often feels like she is too much. What do you want to mm-hmm. say out loud to the woman who is craving an emotionally available man, but often feels like she is too much? Well, the thing that I usually, <clears throat> like the message that I, that I have mm-hmm. at, at the end of shows, and I, mm-hmm. and I feel this strongly, it's, it's, it's definitely present. And it's something that I remind myself consistently. Um, and that is that this is something that, well, it's the message of take responsibility, mm-hmm. take responsibility for this. Um, and, and I, and I want to share the responsibility part doesn't mean that you make everything that's wrong your fault. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I'm speaking of, of this all from an empowered place, meaning mm-hmm. you can do something about it and whether you do it or you don't, that's a choice that you make in some days you know, it's maybe going to be the few days leading up to your period or something. Mm -hmm. And it's impossible for you to take the high road because your hormones, you have an actual biological thing going on and you might still be an asshole to everyone around you, Mm -hmm. but you can have the foresight to, to just share with everyone ahead of time. Like this Mm -hmm. is where I am. Or you could just take space from everyone, including, and especially your partner in the couple of days leading up Mm -hmm. to And so it's the, that is, that is in a sense, taking responsibility. So it's, it's knowing what's going on inside of you. So -hmm. there's, there's several things that, that fall under the list. And I'll use the period here as an example is like, if Mm -hmm. I ask this question, where are you at on your cycle? And you don't know, Mm -hmm. stop, Yeah. like stop that right now. I don't want to hear that. Take responsibility. There's a ton of apps. There's a ton of bioinformation that mm-hmm. you can go and markers that you can look at. Know where you're at in your cycle. Know what's going on. You're a cyclical being. Know when you are in your spring phase of a month. Know when mm-hmm. you are in your winter phase of a month and mm-hmm. honor yourself. Honor yourself. Take mm-hmm. space when you actually need it and go out and be social when that's what's available to you. Do 
things that bring you pleasure. That's another one of those like tantric kind of fluffy things mm -hmm. that people say. And the me from a, a couple of years ago was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Pleasure. I got it. Mm -hmm. But really listen, what br brings you pleasure? So I work a lot and that's a consistent balance for me. So I have a bit of a, a harder, bold kind of way of being for fierce, mm -hmm. ferocious, all of that Leo, lots of fire. Um, and like, has always been like that boss babe kind of archetype. So I have a mm -hmm. lot of women that make their way to me. Cause it's like, Oh, if she can do it. If she can mm -hmm. lay her weapons down mm -hmm. and she can have a man worship yes. her. Like I want to learn from her. And mm -hmm. I'm like, come here, girl. I got the codes, you know, you're going to hate me for a little while, but like, I got you. Um, I hate you in the most loving way, by the way, I hate yeah. you in the most loving. No, I don't hate you at all. I I'm very grateful. Do for it. You. Keep going. No, I, I, <laughs> I don't hate, I, I want, and I, I want everyone listening to this. Listen, you can either be triggered by someone and be like, fuck them, whatever. Or you could say, I want what they have. Like I wanted you on here because I, 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 not just, I like you. That's not it. It's like, <laughs> I see myself. I see one very clear part of you that I'm like, oh, I can, I, I see myself like the boss, babe, the ferocious, I can take care of myself, all that stuff. And then it's like, yeah, but there's such a, there's such a, I don't even want to use the word soft. Cause that's not the word. It was just yeah. like a, I appreciate how much you take responsibility for your feminine essence and energy in a relationship. Like I really yeah. respect, like, yeah, I love that you said that about the cycle in my calendar, five days before my period, it says it's about <laughs> like, let it be like five days before my period. I know where I'm going to be mentally yeah. and hormonally. I really want to say like, man, the way you said it, you know, cause all I preach is, you know, take radical, radical responsibility in your life. Mm -hmm. Why I have not applied radical responsibility to how I am in a romantic partnership. I don't know why yeah, I never took yeah. that level of radical response. Where are, where is that power still being leaked? Where am I still letting myself off the hook, not taking response? I've never like, I can't even believe I'm actually saying this out loud. Like I've never actually said like, oh, I could take radical responsibility for mm -hmm. my internal state in partnership with someone. Mm -hmm. That's that's what I felt has been, was missing. And that's why I wanted yeah. you to, and I know you have retreats. I know you have a retreat coming up, which I want you to, mm -hmm. you have it coming up in April, right? This is going to be. Yeah, I do. April. We do. Yeah. 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 So Jordan, Jordan and I, and thank yeah. you for yeah. your reflections. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, it. I don't ever want anyone to think like, you know, to pedestalize me or the work that we do, mm -hmm. um, because I'm very much in it myself, but I've created fun for me, um, and mm -hmm. fun for my relationship that we have created uh, a business mm -hmm. that is a, that is built. Um, it's made of mirrors. I'm consistently be having, having this reflected to me, you know, the times when I'm incongruent and the times when I'm out of integrity or I'm approaching out of integrity, the times when I'm not walking my talk. And the thing is that I'm a human. And so I get to be, I think, you know, the, you were using the term soft, but I, I use grace a lot. Like mm -hmm. I, I tell myself have grace for yourself, like self grace. Um, and I just think that that's a really beautiful word. Um, and I also, um, use ease. Like I want things to feel easy around me when I'm, my nervous system is dysregulated or I'm feeling particularly, uh, you know, the, the pattern, the personality patterns. Mm -hmm. So, um, I'm an aggressive personality pattern, go figure where, when, you know, my friends are like, if, if Alexa doesn't like you, you'll know she won't, you won't even, she won't even tell, say she will not tell you, but you'll know, you'll feel it, you'll you feel, feel it, it from you across the room. Indifference and my is friends, the best. Indifference. Yeah. And, yeah. and my mm -hmm. friends are, you know, it's really interesting because I've had these times where I've been out in public and if I don't want to be approached, I will not be approached. And that's a decision that I make if I'm, and it's just purely from the energy that I'm putting out because I'm, I'm very discerning and I know I'm open to mm -hmm. open my aura up or I'm closed. And mm -hmm. I have friends that don't know how to do that. So you have the overly rigid that's never open. And then you have the overly open that gets their boundaries bombarded constantly. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of times I get to flex and teach them like you say no sooner and you say no with your energy first. Mm -hmm. 
you know, and you also doesn't, it doesn't mean you're an asshole. You can still be respectful and honor other people's individual individuality and, and dignity in the process, um, until they cross a line. And then it's no longer like, that's not something that you need to be worried about. Some respecting someone who's fully crossing your boundaries. Um, it's just like, you're kind of just reacting at that point, but anyway. Um, yeah. So thank you, uh, for saying that. And, and, um, and that was really just a note of like, I'm in it too. And I'm definitely a student. I'm perpetually mm-hmm. a student. And like you were saying, like my, my handle is that sex chick. I have a podcast called that sex chick. And so, mm-hmm. you know, my, while my husband and I do a lot of work with couples and I work with women and he works with men, um, you know, a lot of the work that I wind up doing is in direct relationship to intimacy. And so this was the thing that I really wanted to say to you, Vaz, is, um, so for me going down the path of personal development and, and expanding consciousness and awakening and all those things, um, I realized that after years of walking down the personal development path and therapy and coaching and all those things that what I was learning and the expansion that I was going through, it wasn't directly translating into my sex life and it wasn't directly chan- translating into to intimate relationships, like romantic relationships. It was like to a point and then it wasn't anymore. And I start, I recognized this within the first year of going down this path. Like, why am I feeling stunted over here? Like, Mm -hmm. why is this not translating? And I wanted it to translate, but I didn't know how until this is the, the last piece of take responsibility is until I took responsibility for learning and deepening my understanding of my own personal sexuality and sexual expression until I started exposing myself to more until I started navigating the shame that I didn't know that was inside of me from many years in a Catholic school and a Catholic upbringing and et cetera, et cetera. And years of using my body in ways that were not respectful to myself and healing from those things. It was through looking at personal development as though it is sexual development as well, or looking at sexual development as if it is also contributing Mm -hmm. a major contribution to my personal development. So when I started the path of sexual development and exposing myself to more and and intentionally learning and healing in that way, it Mm -hmm. translated into every other area of my life. And so I do, so I do a lot of work that has to do with, um, you know, understanding who you are as a sexual being. And, and that's like, you know, this is all my Dharma here where I'm just like, Mm -hmm. this is where I'm supposed to be. Mm -hmm. There's a, this is a no judgment zone where it's like, you'd really have to share some shit to shock me. Mm -hmm. Um, and I almost don't think that it's possible. So, Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to, you know, just share, we didn't specifically talk that much about sex itself and the role that it plays in all of this. And that's definitely my jam too. So if anyone wants to, to find me, you know, on social media or something and, and mm-hmm. look at some of the more like edgy stuff that, that we do, mm-hmm. um, my husband and I are, are, um, you know, of course he's that playful character. Um, and I am just like, I'm, I have the funny edge, but I'm definitely more sincere and discerning than, than yeah. he is. He's like a mm-hmm. bright shining ray of light. Um, that's just such a goofball. Uh, but we like to, you know, introduce people to all kinds of edgy things that maybe they've never considered before, you know, like dominance and submission. And like, what does that look like in a relationship and in a marriage? And what does it look like to do tantric practices together and to make rituals out of sex? And what does it look to like to have like really great maintenance sex? So it doesn't just feel like wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. Let's get this over with. Yes. You know? Maintenance sex. Is this like in, well, I'm yeah. like, what is I love that. Yeah. You know, yes. like the sex that you need to do because you just like, it's yes. been a while and we need to do it and we don't have much time. Yeah. So let's bang it out. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, there's, there's more. Um, and Vasavi, we, yes, we have couples retreats. Mm-hmm. Um, we have, I do women's retreats and Jordan does mm-hmm. men's retreats and we have one in April. We have a few spots left. A few beds are still available, um, for that. And I am, I'm pretty consistently enrolling into intimate group coaching programs. That's Mm -hmm. my main thing that I do is I take groups of three, three to four women at a time Mm -hmm. and we create a little bubble and we work together for three months. Granted, we're getting ready to stretch it out over a year so that I can Mm -hmm. be with people for longer. But, um, yeah, that that's like kind of the rundown for the work that we do. We have other coaches that work for us, Mm -hmm. um, that do coaching and sex, love and relationships as well. Our podcast is awesome. If I may say so myself, (laughs) I listen to your podcast. Uh, First of all, I'm always just listening to people's voices and I pay attention to how does the voice make me feel inside of my body. And I listened to your, your trailer and I listened to one of your other episodes and I was like, 
I really just enjoyed listening to you talk, but also because I enjoyed what you were saying. What you, I needed to hear what you said at this point in my life. If this was a year mm -hmm. ago, even a few months ago, I, I don't think I'd be open to it. Yeah. You know, so I believe like this is all very divine timing. We're me. I, I saw that post for a reason and nothing ever shows up on my feed these days, but I saw that and I was like, oh man. I got to have her on. I got to talk about this. All right. One last question. Um, so for everyone, all the um, information to find Alexa, her podcast, please listen, please really like pay attention to that, right? That sexual development is personal development. That's mm -hmm. really important. And I'm glad that you said that sexual development is personal development. Wow. Um, and everything will be in the show notes, y'all. And the one question, the retreat is for singles or couples? The, the retreat is for couples. Um, and then we, at any given time, just reach out to us. Cause we have it. That's not necessarily for single people, but mm -hmm. I have events that are for either single or partnered women. And Jordan has, um, events that are for single or partnered men. That'd be really fun. I will come to the one for singles. I will be more than I would love to come to your next we, singles event. Yeah. We got it. It's at the end of June and it's in okay. new Orleans. Oh, I I've driven to New Orleans. I've driven. that's where I'm from. Yeah, yeah. that's that's where yeah. I'm from. So that's my second uh, sex positive community is out in uh, is in New Orleans, and we do all kinds of cool stuff around the city. And my mom and my stepdad are the caterers. Oh, oh I met your mother. She was she was great. She's I mean, amazing. We just, talked, we just talked in the corner for like twenty minutes. She's so wonderful. she's so great. Yeah. She's my favorite mom now. Yeah. Not my favorite mom when I was a teen. Nice. Mm -hmm. But as an adult, I'm obsessed with her. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. That happens as we get older. We, mm -hmm. I see, I have much more appreciation for my mother now than I did mm -hmm. when I was a teenager. Um, last question. What else, is there anything else left unsaid inside of you, Alexa, that you didn't get to say out loud today? I think I covered it. Buzz. I think I got it. it. It all came, it came out. I hope you got what you wanted. <laughs> I really did. Listen, you're what you, yeah. you, you, you left it all out on the table. Yeah. I really appreciate you. There's nothing left to be said. And so I want to say thank you um, for taking the time today on your busy Tuesday to come mm -hmm. on to the say it out loud podcast. Thank you so much, Alexa. Mm, thank you so much.